My first introduction to a space telescope, just the concept of a space telescope, came when I was 13, 14 years old in the local library looking up science fiction books. And my favorite science fiction author was Arthur C. Clarke. And he had a book that was nonfiction. It's called The Exploration of Space. Now here we are, a quarter of a century before the Hubble Space Telescope. But Arthur C. Clarke was writing about it in that book in 1951. I'd never heard of a space telescope before. But here he had it, and correctly, orbiting the Earth, completely above the Earth's atmosphere, and taking pictures of the night sky, of, of galaxies, planets, nebulas, and the most distant things in the universe, all unobstructed by the Earth's atmosphere, which we weren't able to do at that point. That was before the space age. Then Hubble goes up and sees the galaxies so well you can look right into them and see the stars that they're made of, something you couldn't see before. Galaxies colliding and tearing each other apart. The astronomer Galileo, in 1610, invented the telescope. The next step, and the next most important step, was the Hubble Space Telescope. I think everybody agrees on this, that over the 400 years to follow that, Hubble's the most important thing that has happened in astronomy telescope uh, and our reach into the universe, expanding human vision. And that's what Hubble's Universe, the book, is all about, the state of the telescope now at its absolute peak of productivity. One of the questions right away, Astronomers said, we want to know something that's been bothering us ever since, uh, I say, the 1920s, when they're tackling the idea that the universe is expanding and it has a specific age. We're now assured that we know how old our universe is. This is, I would say, the most important thing that Hubble has done for science and astronomy. One example of what Hubble can do, and has done many, many times, but let's take one, the antennae galaxies. This is what they look like when you look with a large telescope on Earth. Now look at the Hubble view. This is awesome. And it's a quantum leap from what we had before. Even a layperson just looking at the two the earthbound image and the Hubble image. You can see the amount of detail is incredibly increased. And Hubble has given us this. We can penetrate much farther, much deeper than we've ever been able to do before. So what it means is we know our universe in far more detail than we've ever seen before. The Orion Nebula. This is one of the most spectacular celestial objects in the whole heavens. And one of the reasons that I think people are attached to it is because it's something you can actually see. It's in Orion's sword below his belt. Well, until Hubble, we had some very good pictures of the nebula. Now the Hubble picture just goes in and the nebula surrounds you. It's this fantastic cloud about 30 light years wide, that if you were sailing through it in a spaceship, it would take you decades to get from one side to the other, traveling at the fastest speed that any spaceship could travel. There are hundreds of planetary nebulas, they're called. They're actually stars that are dying. They just look like planets to 17th century astronomers. They're spheres gradually expanding as the stars puff off their outer layers and gradually die, and the central star winks out eventually. These are populating the galaxy, and they just have magical forms. They're beautiful. Hubble's universe places 300 of the very best Hubble images in one volume, a single source for you to explore the universe through 
the very best Hubble images.